All right. Well, let me share my screen. Thank you everyone for um, starting to sign in. So, da, 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 da. here we go. All right, so we're gonna be talking about effective ministry over Zoom today. And let's just do a couple quick introductions. So Dave, why don't you introduce you and your family? Yeah, um, good to be with you guys. Uh, I serve um, in strategy and, and innovation on the discipleship and growth team. And I, I'm the director of growth, associate national director of growth. And you're seeing my wife, Jen, and my son, Ethan. He's six and he's very into dragons right now, which has been a lot of fun. That's awesome. Um, so I'm Jamie Latipo. I'm the Associate Director of Evangelism. Uh, I live in Kansas and about ready to actually move to Minnesota. This is my husband, Paul, and our son, Toby. And Toby has about, I don't know, 20 words in his vocabulary, but he managed to string them together in such a way the other day as to ask me for a dog. So we're in a whole new phase in our, in our life. So i uh, really grateful to have you all today. I actually want us to start with just a word from the Lord. So as Dave and I have been praying, um, and as I've been praying even more today, uh, I keep being drawn back to Acts 11. So I'm going to read just a portion of it and give us a couple of um, my observations and send us, uh, send us back over to Dave. So here we go. Um, now those who have been scattered by the persecution that broke out when the, when Stephen was killed, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. So a couple of things that I've been thinking about as... Um, we're starting to react to our universities closing is the Lord has not surprised. The Lord was not surprised when the church was scattered and he's not surprised today when our inner varsity student, student leaders are being scattered. Uh, and in fact, he can use that to bring about whole new ministry, ministry that we haven't even dreamed of yet. And I think mm -hmm. that's what the Lord is doing. I think the Lord is stirring <clears throat> hunger. Uh, go ahead and mute yourselves. Um, if uh, if you're not talking, we have a fair number of background noise. So anyway, I think the Lord is, is stirring up some spiritual hunger and we can respond to that. And we can choose to be like these unnamed heroes here in Acts that allowed the Lord to transform them in the midst of a difficult season and actually bring a gospel of hope um, to, to students across the U.S. So I think, that's, I think that's the invitation for us, is let us be transformed in the midst of this and bring a gospel of hope. This is the discipleship moment of the year. So with that word, I'm gonna hand it back over to Dave. All right, thanks, Jamie, and thanks for that word. Um, so Jamie uh, and, and my, our department have been um, trying to collaborate and integrate and ask how do discipleship and growth, chapter growth, as well as evangelism, go together. And so this is uh, one example of our thinking. Um, and by now, we're probably all either slightly excited or slightly tired of two by twos, but um, they, they're helpful for understanding how um, two things go together. So let me start with um, if you have low discipleship and growth in your fellowship and low evangelism, we think the, the danger there is being uh, having a passive faith that's mainly just around uh, social connections. I think a lot of us do start here, so I don't want to sound like social connections are bad, but if we never actually grow out of this, we miss a lot of opportunities uh, in God's call to be his witnesses and also to deepen um, our own discipleship and chapter growth. Now, if we increase um, our our discipleship and growth, but we don't increase evangelism. So we're now in the blue area. We run the danger of becoming pharisaical, which means um, we can become like an arrogant holy huddle where we think we are the ones who've got it all right. Um, denominational issues like predestination or particular views on um, topics uh, tend to dominate the discussion rather than being hospitable and understanding what God's call is for the group to be outward focused. That brings that that outward focus often brings health to a group. 
Um, alternatively, if we um, stay, uh, if we end up being low in discipleship and growth, but we really increase evangelism, what can sometimes happen is get certain folks who might have high evangelism gifts or even be gifted in prophetic stuff, but um, they're, they're more of a false prophet. And the, the growth is really flash in a, in a pan because it's really around that person or that person's gifting or their teaching or what they're saying in that moment. And the time and the energy is not being put into helping the people who come to faith actually become disciples and to help the roots of their faith grow deeper. And so what we're shooting for um, in this call and in the partnership between growth and discipleship and evangelism is the fourth quadrant, high discipleship and growth and high evangelism, which is what we believe are world changers that have um, conversion communities. This is places where we are growing deep in our discipleship. We're seeing uh, God move. We're adding people to our number and um, we're proclaiming the gospel, seeing people come to faith and seeing them get discipled. So I will... Um, so the next thing we want to do is actually uh, just actually give us some time to pray. And so in a minute, Angelo is going to get assign us to um, breakout rooms in Zoom. So you'll have a partner. And why don't you just go ahead? You're, you're going to have three minutes. Just go right into some listening prayer for what God is saying in the season. And then, um, Angelo, do you want to tell us a little bit more about when we come back, where we'll be posting um, our, our comments and our, our debrief? Yeah, so for some of you, you're in a Google Doc that has a big table with your names on it. There's going to be a table on the second page that's going to have questions for you to answer. If you're not on this Google Doc, I'm going to drop a link to the Facebook group, uh, the InterVarsity staff Facebook group, um, and you can post your responses there, and the question will be up for you. And if you're not on either of those, you can use the chat in Zoom. Thanks, Angelo. So we are, because this call has um, a lot of people on it, we've had to do a couple of technological things to allow us all to participate. We wanted you to see the Google Doc because what we're trying to demonstrate is what you can do with your students. You'll be fine with a group of 10, 15, 20 doing a Google Doc and Zoom. It's because this call is so large that we're bringing in Facebook as a platform to make sure everyone can use their, their voice to participate. So sorry for the complexity, uh, but we want to involve you and, and, and include you. So um, go ahead and bring us into breakout rooms, Angelo, and um, you'll have, uh, like I said, a couple minutes to do some listening prayer for this season, and then we'd love to hear what you're hearing when you come back. Wonderful. So Angela, why don't you drop a post in, um, in the Facebook, the national Facebook page? Will you make it clear like this is for the webinar so that it's not confusing to all of our colleagues why all of a sudden all these posts keep coming up? And what we want to ask you is how is God speaking to you? And um, what do you like about either this word from the Lord and what he's speaking to you or about the two by two? And then everyone else will be here in just a few seconds. In the chat, I'm linking our Facebook post. So if you're not in the Google Doc, use the Facebook post. If you are in the Google Doc, use the Google Doc. There's a table for you at the top of the Google Doc. Close to the top. Wonderful. And then Angela, will you will you just mute all participants, but um, but Dave and I. Thank you. Awesome. So if you if you didn't hear, go ahead and jump into the Facebook group and share what do you like either about the two by two or um, what God is stirring in you or a word that you've heard from the Lord. Um, and if you would comment, then we might be able to highlight a couple of those um, for the whole group. So you probably saw the comment from Angelo, but Google Docs supports about 25 or 30 people at most. And so we've, we've got 96 people on this call, which I think is a record, um, which is great. So we are on Facebook, the staff Facebook page. Wonderful. 
Yeah, so just a couple of highlights. So maybe this is an invitation from the Lord to be creative um, mm -hmm. and pursue the 2030 calling. I think so. Um, uh, the words, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Um, new life for students. Do not be afraid. Wonderful. Like the scripture from Acts, God is not surprised. All right, so many things. So I would encourage you later after the webinar, go ahead and read through these posts or get back on the Google Doc. It's a great way to kind of learn all together what is the Lord doing. But for the sake of our time, I'm going to share my screen and keep us going. So um, we're trying to model an example of a way to lead on Zoom. And I'm going to give you just a couple of snippets of how to make Zoom calls great. So one is to be directive. Um, call on people specifically to talk. Um, call out things that are being written. Tell people how you want them to pray. It just helps things move along and for the meetings not to drag on. The second thing is use a Google Doc or your chapter Facebook page so that everyone can participate because not everyone can speak at once. And then second, keep the content short and use breakout rooms to process. So as much as we can, we're going to try and give you a short piece of content and then send you into breakout rooms as a way of modeling. All right. Um, and then you'll see this on the Facebook page, I think on Monday, there's going to be an interview done by Andy Kim with Heather Wilson from Study Abroad on best practices for building community online. So you should keep, uh, keep an eye out for that. All right, over to you, Dave. Great, thanks, Jamie. So um, what we'd like to do now is um, we're just gonna talk a little bit about um, what, what things can you be focusing on in your ministry now that we're largely moving to uh, a digital space. And so I'll talk a little bit about some ideas from kind of the disciple, discipleship and growth perspective. Jamie's gonna talk a little bit about evangelism after this and we'll give you some time to process it. So as I've been praying and thinking with Jamie, um, I have four essentials that I wanna invite you to do with um, your students as we um, see an increased um, trend towards being off campus. So the first, uh, let me give you the list of my four, if you can go to the next slide. Um, so four essentials, and I don't think these will surprise any of you, but continue to do Bible study, um, essential for hearing the words of Jesus and obeying through scripture. Uh, and I'll go into some details on each of these. Uh, continue to meet, in community, uh, largely over digital is fine because people need a chance to share authentically with one another and to connect and, and, um, and to be together, even if it's digitally. Thirdly, uh, do prayer and worship. Um, intercede for the people in your network. Our networks are shifting as we're now all getting these words from the Lord about how um, the, the church was spread out. So like even our sense of networks, a lot of us might be home more, around our neighbors more, but what is God doing in our networks on campus and at home and other places? And then engage your network with mission. Um, who are you leading and shepherding um, into deeper discipleship? And how are you engaging with um, people on the margins of faith and your community by, by sharing the gospel? So let me give you just a couple things to try uh, online uh, with each of these. So firstly, Bible study. You can do a very simple Bible study uh, by, um, opening the Bible, copy pasting um, text from Bible Gateway. There's, there's even people who've done more than that. We'll be posting resources, but at a bare minimum, you can get people engaged in scripture and then use a Google Doc to have people write their names down and record it in a column, like their, their observations and what verse or line number they saw it in. So the stuff we would normally do in Urbana or um, you know, if we were in a manuscript study, questions they have about the text and um, Another way to do it would be the second column or the second chart that you see below there, which is to do kind of a communal um, posting of observations. So everybody works in the same table, looking for repeated words, looking for comparisons, contrasts, and you can create columns for your different, um, your different OIA stuff. So just a quick look at how you could translate Bible study and keep that, um, that essential going. Next one is community. Um, share authentically with one another. I, I have got, um, I've been going on for about a year, no, actually about two years, where I've been meeting with some friends from seminary. We're in 
four different time zones in two countries and we meet once a month on Sundays on Zoom and we do an exam together. And it's a deep time of connecting. And I would say whether you do an exam or just share how you're doing, you can connect really deeply on, on Zoom. Um, so here's the five steps of an exam that you could go through. And I put a link there to um, a Jesuit site that gives you uh, more explanation on how to do it. But you could just practice this on the Zoom call. And then if you go to the next slide, you could create this little table where you just ask people to write where they've experienced God's presence and where they experienced his absence. And people can have some reflection time communally and see what each other have written. The third essential is um, prayer and worship. So on the Zoom call, you could read a psalm together. Um, one place to start if, if you're not sure where is the Psalms of Ascent. It's protection and journey motifs are really strong in the Psalms of Ascent. So 120 through 134. You could fix our prayer. Um, there's a couple places that host that. Um, and I put you put a link in there for one, one place to be able to read them for free. And these are, it's the Book of Common Prayer kind of translated into like easy to read prayers. Um, it's kind of dummy proof. I like it that way. Uh, you could also just do what we just did, which is you, you split off into pairs or triplets and do some listening prayer. Um, interceding together. And then um, if you go to the next slide, here's a couple tips for doing prayer on Zoom. Um, as students get used to the digital space, um, be directive in setting up the prayer by giving people a, an order to pray in. So I might say, Jamie, I'd like, why don't you go ahead and open and I'll pray for a bit and then I'm going to invite Anne to pray and then I'll close. And that's just to help people get comfortable. Um, and another way would be if you fill out the exam and chart, just um, say, pray for the person above you and in the chart. And then the person on top prays for the person on the bottom. So again, just giving direction, being directive and how you order it. And then just to name that silence is okay. And it's okay if two people start praying at the same time. One of the effects of a digital call is you just don't have the social cues that someone's about to start talking. And if you just name that, it helps people feel a little bit more at ease and the goal is not so much that the call is smooth, it's that people can be authentic and aren't tripped up by stumbling over each other and start to feel more comfortable in engaging with each other. And then lastly, um, I would say engage your network. And um, I feel like this is really important. Actually, Jamie was kind of named this really clearly when we were prepping. I just thought it was a really apt word that our students, a lot of our students whose campuses are closing you know, their mind shift, minds are going to be shifting to home and other things. But I think it's a, a time to say, don't stop being a shepherd. Like you have people, especially our leaders and our apprentices, like they have people under them. And the st as staff, we're going to be caring for our leaders. So keep the leadership structures in place. Um, reach out to your apprentices. Reach out to your members. Make a phone call. I was just reading a rabbi who was saying, with social distancing, you're taking a step back. Find another way to take a step forward start using the phone again, like make a phone call and connect with people. Um, and that's gonna be new for a lot of us, but I think it's, it's an appropriate way to make a more meaningful connection. So keep the leadership stuff in, in place, talk your, to your leaders about that and how they can care for their six or eight or 10 or 12 people. Um, and then what Jamie's gonna share next is how to think about our new networks and how to, our, our current networks and any new networks and how to engage them with the gospel and the kingdom. And so we'll do that next. But I wanna give you a couple minutes um, in Zoom breakouts to just think about these four essentials and uh, what you like and what you think you might wanna try. So Angelo is gonna go ahead and put us back into breakouts. <clears throat> so good for you early returners. Um, um, why don't you jump into Facebook? Um, Angelo is gonna post for us. We have a couple of questions for to this work on. So we're gonna ask, um, what do you like about narrowing ministry down to these four essentials? And what next steps do you want to take? And then we're also going to see what questions do you have about moving your ministry online? Now, we're not going to be able to answer all of your questions. Um, and honestly, we're all sort of learning at the same time. Some of us have more experience doing ministry online than others. But none of us have been through this particular situation before. <laughs> But we will look at your questions and uh, bring them to SNI and we'll see how we can best answer them. Okay. So go ahead and go to Facebook and start typing. You also might need to refresh your browser if you don't see, um, yep. see the questions.
Um, if you are just joining us back, welcome back. Um, jump over to Facebook and Angela will be posting um, a couple questions. What do you like about the four essentials, which again are Bible study, community, prayer and worship. I kind of cheated, put two together in one there. And then network map, engaging your network map, um, engaging your network. And what questions do you have about um, doing ministry online or on Zoom? Wonderful. So we'll just give a couple minutes. Um, Anna asked a question of what do you do when students have limited access to internet or computers, but do have phones? Um, I led a cohort a couple years ago with students where some of them had some limited access um, and Zoom allows you to call in. And what we would do was email in advance um, what we were going to do so they could kind of write down um, and follow along. They usually were able to check email before the call and then they would just call in and we would just have to be very directive um, so that it was easy to engage by phone and with video. Uh, but let us know what you're learning as, as you engage that more. Some other comments um, like the streamlined nature of these four essentials. Um, like that we should encourage our students to focus on missional efforts, um, friends at home or online, um, people from your own campus. Anything you wanna highlight, Dave? Um, yeah, this is, I agree. Um, you can use phone and Google Docs um, if people don't have um, a computer. Um, that's a great comment. Um, I'm just catching up with what people are writing. Um, What about planting and outreach going forward, Legerica? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. I mean, that that's a largely shifting, um, you know, um, uh, horizon. So we're we're not sure. But I I really do think I think one of the reasons we said those four essentials is because really believe that even if we had the answer, it's probably just coming from the strategy brain, which isn't bad. But like I really think that groups need to just. Um, we know we know basic staff work and if we're listening to Jesus and thinking I think he will show us where the gospel needs to go so I know I'm being a little vague there I think the fundamentals of us are praying listening to scripture discerning what God's doing and acting and I think um, planting and outreach w will look differently but it might mean that you've got seekers joining a zoom call it might mean that um, your parents are on a zoom call with you or asking you about how it went or asking if, if they're not believers, your families aren't believers, like there might be opportunities to talk more about that if students are home, they might be re-engaging neighborhood friends. So we just have to keep our eyes open and seeing what God's doing. In terms of planting, I, I really don't know. I don't have a good answer for that, but I think, again, well, our eyes will be open to what, what God's doing. Certainly, this will be a huge experience for universities amidst the tuition crisis of bringing a lot of stuff online. And so um, in some ways, maybe we'll get some practice at how to engage with people in ministry spaces, um, because I, I don't, I think there'll be some of this that's like a new normal, you know, coming out of all of, uh, kind of all this digital learning. So um, whatever God's doing, we'll keep our eyes open. Yeah. You wanna say anything more, Jamie? Yeah, why don't I, uh, I'm gonna share my screen again and see if um, this doesn't kind of help think about um, how outreach and how planting continues. Not a perfect answer, but um, as we think about networks and helping your students engage with the people, the Christians that they're already caring for and mentoring and the non-Christians that are in their lives, I'm going to suggest two things. And that is two plus and easy gigs. And I'll, I'll tell you more about how that all goes together. So I like two plus because it's easy to coach over Zoom. It's something that um, anyone, students, staff, can, can pass on um, electronically. Every student faculty is connected to non-Christians, and non-Christians need the gospel in the midst of panic. And I think two plus and easy gigs makes responding with hope actionable. 
And so let me show you, these are just some screenshots of um, the evangelism website. So the link um, was here on the previous page. And here's the two plus card. So it takes you through four steps. And this is an integrated tool with the best of planting, the best of discipleship and growth, and the best of evangelism. And we start with our network map in prayer. And so when I'm doing this online, I just give like two minutes, two or three minutes in a breakout room. Start listing the non-Christians in your life. Then we move on to listening prayer. And I'll probably also do that in a breakout room. Go in a pair and just take 30 seconds or so to listen and ask God to bring two names uh, to mind and just highlight those names. And then we do our five thresholds. And so I didn't take a screen cap of this, but there's also um, the descriptions of each threshold here. And you just do a little bit of discernment, talking in pairs and threes. Um, where is your friend and why do you think so? Which, which of the small little definitions seem to match and take your best guess? And each one of those has a next step, a best next step um, recommended. And then the last one is your commitment. It's how do you want to pray? When are you going to see your friend? What's the next step? And this is what it looks like when I do it on a Google Doc. So, oh, okay, someone is annotating. I love it. So list your name, and this is actually from yesterday. I changed the names, but this is exactly what I did online with students yesterday. So Amy, our student leader, did her network map, and she named four non-Christians. And in listening prayer, she said, okay, John and Jane, those are the people that I'm reaching out with, or reaching out to. Uh, then we did a little bit of discernment, and she discovered that John is curious and Jane is seeking. And then we've made the plan. And the plan has four parts. So one was creating options. What are some questions that she could ask John to help him move through curious and be open? Then she highlighted what she was gonna do and named when she was going to do it. And then because we think this is a season where people are going to be hungry for the gospel, she wrote out an invitation to a gig. So her plan is to meet up, ask her a couple of questions, and then invite to a gig. Then at the end of that, we named who are the Christians that she could also do to class with. And she named a few people, and then she realized, hey, we're going to our last in-person Bible study right now. I'm going to do this with everyone at the Bible study. And that's what they did yesterday afternoon. And so in about 30 minutes, uh, we equipped a student to take some steps with her non-Christian friends and equipped her to care for the whole Bible study that she's leading and help them think about who are the people they're connecting to. Um, actually, I'm gonna sh show you my related resources and then I'm gonna come back to what do you like. So the evangelism department earlier today um, created our best online gigs. And so what you have is a gig, so the reveal gig. So this is what was at Urbana. We made a sample text that students could use to invite. Um, we have instructions for what they should do to lead the gig online, and then a follow-up next step. And so we have that for reveal. We have that for John 4, where we even have a spoken word video that they can share online um, or through text with folks and our, we're calling our worst day video, talking about suffering and what's God's hope in suffering. And so we would recommend that you use these because they're easy for students to use and we already have things kind of mapped out for them and you guys can just help them put it into their own words. Um, so there's that. And then our call to faith summary, um, which is just a one page, here's the gospel, and here's invitations to Christians and non-Christians to respond to the gospel. So mm -hmm. trying to make it as easy for students to move online as possible. So let's go back into pairs and you can talk about what do you like about using 2 plus with your students as a way to help them mobilize in their networks and what questions do you have about using it or coaching your students? Awesome. Thanks everyone for hanging in here. I know that this is kind of a wild ride, 
little bit of content really fast and then a little bit of processing. Um, all of these things will be available to you online. You can slow it down and process it a little bit more. Um, why don't we go to Facebook and give you a chance to actually slow down a minute and post what do you like about using 2 Plus with your students and what questions do you have? Just a reminder to mute your audio. Just do the number of people on the call. It's easy to get some background noise. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> yes what's up with the coronavirus queen text it's all right if you don't like to use that we thought our image of babylon kind of looked like could be the coronavirus queen um so it's just our way of being a, a, a little funny let's see other The other, um, as you guys are typing, the other thing, I've been on a few calls with Jamie where she's done five thresholds coaching. And um, it's such a great opportunity to help students like practice what they would say. Um, so we obviously don't want to overload you with content in this call, but uh, one of the practical learning steps is even to just have them do a quick role play. And I even usually say, and Jamie says, like the goal isn't like that you're rehearsing this as if it's a performance, it's just to help what's in your head come out your mouth so that there's a little bit more practice in how it'll sound. Now that presumes they would do it in person. Um, so we'll be rapidly approaching a place where like this, these could be Instagram like posts or, or texts or other social media platforms. But um, in any case, it gives you them a chance to really think about how to, how to talk to a friend and um, the five thresholds really provide a way to like, not feel like you're doing everything in one conversation. So I'm just focusing on, in one sense, like building trust with somebody or evoking curiosity. And I think that helps students not feel like they have to jump a whole flight of stairs to a conversion. They're just working on their next step. Um, and that's been really powerful. Mm -hmm. Just looking at a couple of comments. So Kim Coy from Florida, RD in Florida says that maybe this is an easier on-ramp for iGen students to meet online rather than in person. Um, seeing some comments about liking the uh, just a simple next step um, for people and someone uh, Jacob Fisher is asking how do you do this communally one of the things I like about doing a coaching call with a couple of students is even though I might be reaching out to someone individually and that's more more likely when we're online and um, I'm making a request of Dave and I'm texting him um, you can actually crowdsource. What's the best text message to send to Dave? What's the best way to invite him to, uh, to a gig? And it's not just me thinking about it. It's actually our community thinking about how do we love and care for Dave and invite him um, into the gig. Um, that's what we were doing yesterday with three or four people on the call, um, working together to figure out what's the very best way to invite and what's the great next step. So. Seeing other comments of being excited about using it. I, um, I love it. Um, Dave, do you have like 30 seconds of one thing you're seeing as you're coaching online and what's it like to have that kind of relationship um, equipping students online? Yeah, yeah, a fair number of my calls, I'm you know meeting students and a lot of times they're staff and their area director for the first time and so, um, it, this really can be done. Um, it, uh, one of the things I love about having um, a student, their staff, and their area director on the call is it's a great slice of ministry. Um, when I was a staff director and I had to do that, it usually involved driving a several hours and a lot of scheduling to set that up. But on Zoom, it's just a matter of sending, finding a time of students free, even if they just have 20, 30 minutes. We've done a lot in just a short amount of time. 
And the area director gets to help the staff get better. The staff is helping the area director. The students are giving us an insight into ministry. So um, in some ways, this might feel like a step back with, with what coronavirus is doing, but there are ways it's a step forward in terms of the power to be present in a lot of conversations that were a lot harder to, to do. Um, and it's a beautiful thing when you're on a call and you see an area director helping a student think about um, how to talk to their non-Christian friend. And I've been on, almost every call I've been on, the area directors walk away feeling like they have clear things they want to pray for, or the regional director, clear things they want to pray for, for that student, their friends. So it's a beautiful learning and transformation community that we can build on Zoom, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I think my highlight was yesterday when the news hit um, one particular campus that they would be extending spring break and student staff and area director all working together uh, to think about how do we how do we move our ministry online how do we use the two plus card and the student made this comment of like oh i just love this community all working together um, so that we can still have great ministry i think that's that's really true that even though we're used to in person um, our students love to engage online and choosing to be on calls together and, and brainstorming how might we take next steps actually builds community for them um, and honors them. So mm. that's great. That's good. And they also have a built-in like prayer list, right? So when they do two plus, they have something daily they can pray over, which I also like because it's kind of a spiritual discipline to be thinking about those folks regularly. Yeah. And a list of folks that we can be praying for in our across our whole chapter and areas and regions. Um, before we kind of wrap up the call, Dave, I have a couple questions for you about just normal things that we would be doing at this time of year. So yeah. what do we do with, with things like leadership selection and senior interviews and getting our AFR data? But what would be your recommendation? Yeah, my recommendation would be to still do all those things. So please do all those things. Um, so for example, um, as you, I know several folks I was talking to this week, their campuses are literally closing. Set up a call right now with your leadership team, if you haven't done that, just to talk about what is gonna be the new normal, get some stuff in the calendar, get yourself a Zoom account in the Facebook, or excuse me, in the Google Doc, there's a link to the InterVarsity staff page on how to get a Zoom account. It'll cost you 90 bucks a year, very much worth it at this time. So keep your, try to keep as many of your rhythms going. There may be obvious rhythms you want to pause, like large groups and stuff like that. We, there might be some more ways we can engage with that creatively down the road. But at a minimum, get your leaders together so you can figure out how to care for everyone and stay connected, figure out what Bible studies and the, your essentials are going to look like. Um, still do your senior interviews. Um, get that Zoom account going, set up calls. Um, and do it over Zoom. And um, I think you, I think we're creative. We're creative community. So find some fun ways to help bless your students as they're having a very strange senior year. And um, and share share what you learn. And then please do your AFR. Um, I I know not a lot of people read the whole national AFR. I might be one of ten people in the movement who read it, but um, I, I'm joking. It's but it, it's really really helpful. We learn super important student purple super important trends on the AFR and it helps us understand what we need to focus on and it helps you too whether you're an area director or regional director or staff see long-term trends in ministry so uh, it actually might be fairly easy to do it with a leadership team because you could set up a google doc or open the AFR stuff and actually just fill it out as you're talking with them um, many of you have even maybe tried that before so um, Anyway, the main point is um, please do those things and it'll help our movement um, and it'll help you. So yeah. did you want to comment, Jamie? Yeah, I'll, I'll have one word on the AFR. I'm sure there'll be an official um, word on helping us think about how do we count and all those sorts of things, but keep track of the, the people on the margins who are now going to come into gigs that your students are starting. Because my guess is that we'll figure out a way to capture the ministry that happens in the weeks um, that we're not physically present with folks. So just try and keep tabs on how is God expanding your ministry and where are the people coming faithfully where maybe there wasn't a structure there before. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be a word down the line on how do we actually uh, faithfully capture that. So wonderful. 
I think we're going to end with an announcement. So you'll probably have very specific questions about your campus. What, what do you want to do for um, your small groups, your large group? How do you coach students? And I know we haven't gone in depth in those things. And that's because Dave and I would like to offer office hours to you. So Mondays from 5 to 6.30 Eastern or 2 to 3.30 Pacific, I'm going to be on my Zoom line, which is um, this link right here, and I would love to brainstorm specifically about your campus and your scenario, and how might you use 2 plus in your context or whatever it might be, and Dave will do the very same thing on Thursdays from 2 to 3 Eastern or 11 to 12 Pacific. Um, and my invitation is until the need no longer exists, I will be there every week. So. Um, please feel free to take advantage of that. Yep, and if you jump on mine, you get the legendary Anna Lee Winans as well. So we'll be working together for that hour and would love to help you with wherever you're at. And we're not answer people, Jamie, I, Anna, we, but we just wanna help. We'll help the people on the call work together, form a little learning community mm -hmm. and uh, do the best we can, so. Yeah. Yep. Last post of the day, um, what was your favorite part of this call? And do you have any feedback for Dave and for I about um, how we could either lead better or how we can serve you um, in the weeks to come? So we'll jump over to Facebook and I'll stop my screen so you can, you can respond. Jamie, there's a request for the PowerPoint, which we just have as a Google Doc, so we could probably just drop that link, mm -hmm. I think, right at the end. We'll drop it in the Facebook. Yeah, and then we're also going to be giving this recording and our PowerPoint um, to James Chung, who is putting together kind of official resources, so it'll be made available to all of you. Wonderful. I'm going to refresh. Awesome. Jacob says his favorite part was the breakouts to debrief the questions and sections. Uh, I think that's usually where the best parts of Zoom calls are. And so you can be thinking about that as you create community on Zoom. How do you create spaces for people to process um, where it's easy to talk freely because there's only a few people? Yeah, I would say if you're gathering with a group of people, and I don't know if you have a rule of thumb, Jamie, but if it gets much over five or six, start using breakout rooms, just because people start to, it, in Zoom, the danger to be disengaged gets higher and higher, um, and it starts to feel like a talking head, and, and the way you, from a learning perspective, can adjust that is giving people process space and a chance to talk with a smaller group of people. So even if you have a leadership team meeting of eight people, find a way to create a couple breakout rooms to process stuff yeah that's good what did jamie did you say one time like zoom is kind of like having a meeting underwater i forget what we were talking about but it, it's it's that you got to kind of remember that like it, it feels like you're in person but there's there's dynamics that aren't intuitive that you have to kind of remember yeah things in the way i love it things are in the way yep i love um that the favorite parts of the call have mostly what the lord is speaking and I think that's true in this season. The Lord is speaking to us and will help us to be nimble and to learn new ways of doing ministry. Yeah, I'm actually going to probably launch an online Bible study at my church too. So maybe if you're learning some good stuff, offer it to your church. We're going to streaming services starting this Sunday. So we're going to also do the, the divine hours three times a week for like a few minutes so anyway there's applications of this broader than just university too awesome. well thank you everyone uh, you'll see more resources coming from sni and uh next week and let us know how we can be helpful to you and uh we would love to do before you leave one giant 
screen capture yes. of this massive call, which I'm going to try to do. So uh, I won't be able to get everyone, but I'll get as many as I can. So if you are available to turn off your video and smile, that would be awesome. And I'm going to, I'll give us a countdown. Okay. Look at your camera. <laughs> All right. Neil's shaking his head. All right, in three, two, one. Awesome, I'll post it in the Facebook page. Thanks everyone. Bye everyone, thank you so much. God's thank peace. You. This is really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for Arkansas. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.